Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a review discussion of one of the most conflicted reads that I've had thus far on my YouTube channel. The book, the series that I'm going to be discussing today is Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. Yes, this book came out three years ago and I'm very late to the party, but finally got around to reading this and I have thoughts. First half of this video, I'm going to be talking about book one with no spoilers to the best of my ability. You know, I still make mistakes. And then I'm going to be very clearly marking a spoilery discussion section because I cannot fully talk about my full thoughts and feelings about this book without delving into spoilers. And I am even going to be talking about book two at the end of this video. I am currently 60% into book two. And I have additional thoughts in that realm as well. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Gideon the Ninth and what the heck is even going on. Let's talk about the plot summary. So Gideon the Ninth is about this expansive empire that has been around for 10,000 years and there are nine great houses that rule different planets and they all have necromantic magic powers. So this is a blend of sci-fi and fantasy. And one day the emperor calls the heads of the nine houses to his mysterious mansion um, and presents them with a challenge. And the challenge is to figure out how to become immortal, essentially. So the story takes place on in this mansion and we follow Gideon. <laughs> now Gideon is from the ninth house on the ninth planet and her family is all about guarding the locked tomb, which is very mysterious. Hence why the series is called The Locked Tomb. And Gideon's head of house is named Harrow Hark Nona Jesimus, the Reverend Daughter. Okay, and she says to Gideon, Gideon, come to the mansion with me and be my sword swordsman and protect me while I try to ascend to immortality. And in exchange, I will give you your freedom. Gideon is kind of an indentured servant slash slave to the ninth house. She was an orphan that they took in and basically have used her ever since. That's the plot. It's really confusing. And for the most of the part, the characters have no idea what the plot is. So if you don't understand the plot, that's okay because I don't think you're meant to. Let's discuss genre and age range because this book toes the line of genre and age range both. So for example, Gideon is 18 and Harrow is 17, um, but this book does have, you know, violence and gore and it just deals with some heavier topics and it has a lot more complexity. I think in the world building than you find in typical young adult. I mark this book as an adult book. Even though the characters are 18, I think the target audience for this particular series is adult. But that's just my opinion. <laughs> and then we have genre. So this is sold. <laughs> this is sold to people or the, the tagline of this or whatever is lesbian necromancers in space. And I don't think that that's wrong because obviously we're dealing with a huge galactic empire. We're dealing with, they are, um, the great houses come from different planets. They all have to travel through space, but the majority of this book in particular takes place in one location. It takes place in the mansion. And so it's kind of like a closed door mystery where all of these characters are in one location and they're kind of trapped there. Um, it's not like a, a great sci-fi epic where we're traveling around to, to different galaxies and, and going on a space adventure. So it's not quite sci-fi in that way. And when we say necromancy, <laughs> that's obviously a magic system. And so each of the nine houses has a different kind of necromantic 
magical specialty. All right. And so a lot of this book is exploring the magic and the obviously the nine houses are trying to discover the magic that will let them become immortal. So this book, it truly is a fantasy in that way and that there's a lot of magic world building in that way. So I think this is a really interesting book because I think it, it, it toes the line between young adult and adult as well as science fiction and fantasy. Next, I'm going to talk about the writing. <laughs> I found the writing very charming and very funny. So we are in Gideon's perspective. It's third person, but it's primarily from Gideon. And Gideon is a swordswoman. <laughs> and so she's not super involved in the magic discovery. Uh, but I think Gideon as a character is a lot of fun. She's crass. She likes nudie magazines. She swears a lot. And I think she's quite funny as well. I don't think she's stupid by any means, but she is just more of kind of a tough, a tough guy kind of type of character. She's more uh, brawn, the, you know, she's supposed to be the hired muscle. And I think reading from her perspective is quite fun. Um, she has some really excellent swear words <laughs> with really excellent timing in this book that I found quite fun. I did listen to this on audiobook. Um, but I think I would actually recommend reading this physically because there are so many characters that have very similar sounding names um, that I think it would be beneficial to reference the character guide that's in the front of the book. Uh, so you could be like, wait, who is, who is this? <laughs> what's going on? Because not only do the characters not really know what's going on, but it's a little bit confusing the way that it's told. This is a type of story where I think you need to pay a lot of attention to. So 70% of the book, the characters have no idea what they're, what's going on and things, you're bumbling around, you're just trying to understand. And then the last 30% of the book, things start coming together, things start making sense. There's a lot of plot happening. It's very action intense as well as a ton of reveals are happening. So if you're not the type of person who has a lot of patience and can, you know, you want action throughout, this is not the book for you. I personally could not just have it on in the background while I was doing other things. I really had to pay attention to what was going on to, to try and understand and then have things revealed in the last little bit of the book to really fully comprehend the scope of what the author was trying to accomplish with this book. So overall, I I did enjoy this book. For the again, for the first bit of the book, I was confused, but I enjoyed Gideon and Harrow enough as characters to want to see their story through and to want to know what happened, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I enjoyed Gideon as a crass queer swordswoman character however i enjoyed harrow way more just because i found her to be such an interesting character so if you so it really depends on what type of character you are drawn to um i think gideon is fun but she just wasn't my favorite so she wasn't my favorite main character to be honest to me i thought the twist was well done well executed I kind of saw it coming or I had a sneaking suspicion of what the twist would be, but I still thought the overall execution of the lead up to the twist and the twist itself was really well done. And so for me, it was worth it to read like 350 pages of nonsense, <laughs> nonsense uh, before we got there. You know what I mean? But if you're not that type of reader, you're not willing to wait for the payoff, uh, maybe this isn't a book for you or a series for you because book two is even more so. <laughs> you have to read more craziness and confusion before you get to any sort of payoff. So I like want to give this book five stars for the ending, but like uh, three stars for the first big chunk of the book, if you if you get what I mean. So I think Overall, I settled on like a four star, but it's a really complicated four star rating. It's just like, again, it's going to be one of those things where like, if you think it's going to be worth it for you, I would try it.
we need to talk spoilers. We're talking spoilers for the end of book one. Spoilers. Specifically, we have to talk about the characters. Okay? Spoilers. Click away. Go away. Goodbye. <laughs> if you've read Gideon the Ninth, um, please talk to me. <laughs> Send me a message because I have so many thoughts about the ending of this book. So from the moment Harrow stepped onto the page, she's a, she's a, you know, it's from Gideon's perspective, but as soon as Gideon sees Harrow and starts talking about her in her head, I was immediately swept away by Harrow as a character. I thought Harrow was so smart and funny and ruthless, and she's always like 10 steps ahead, ahead of Gideon. Gideon is not stupid, I've said this before, but Harrow is just leaps and bounds smarter than, than Gideon. Harrow just has this like charm and this presence, and even though Gideon hates Harrow, I think at times she's kind of drawn in by Harrow's charm. I, and I think a lot of characters and readers are drawn in by Harrow's charm. In my opinion, I think Harrow is in love with Gideon. It's kind of like a rivals, but maybe we're secretly obsessed with each other kind of vibe. And I was rooting for Harrow the entire time. This is my problem with Gideon as the main character. As I've discussed previously, the plot of this book is a discovery of a magic system and Gideon is not the magic user. So she ha plays a very passive role in the furthering of the plot. She's there, she is doing things, she's interacting with other characters, but she's not the active magic user. So it feels like she's really a secondary character, even though she's supposed to be the main character. So even from the beginning of the book, I was like, Gideon doesn't feel like the main character. Harrow feels like the main character. She's doing a lot, Harrow is doing a lot of the, the grunt work, a lot of the discovery. Harrow's the one plotting and planning and doing all the stuff. And Gideon is kind of just along for the ride. And I had a suspicion that Harrow would become either the main character or a secondary main character in book two, because book two is called Harrow the Ninth. So I was like, okay, well, she's probably gonna have her perspective told in the second book. So when the end happens, um, I can spoil it because I've, I've already said a spoiler warning. When Gideon sacrifices herself, I was not surprised. It didn't emotionally impact me. I think as, as much as I've seen people crying over the ending of this book because of Gideon's sacrifice. And I didn't feel that same way because I could kind of see it coming. I didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I, I had a sneaking suspicion that something was going to happen to Gideon to have Harrow become the MC. I was kind of happy with how the ending happened. Like, I feel bad for Gideon, but I was just like, I'm team Harrow all the way. The unfortunate thing about this book and like the structure of it is because it was told for from Gideon's perspective the whole book feels like a prequel to Harrow ascending you know what I mean like it doesn't I don't know if it feels like a, a good book in its own right or you know I'm not sure um just because Harrow felt like the main character the whole time if you know what I mean so that's kind of why I'm also landing on a four star as well just because while I love Harrow and I did enjoy Gideon as a character I think what the author chose to do with it kind of made book one feel like a prequel. I do want to say that I I did enjoy the twist villain. Um, the twist villain was really good. I did not see it coming and I thought it was well done. So good job there. Let's really quickly talk about Harrow the ninth the sequel. I'm really disappointed with where this book is going. What is happening? I'm 60% in. And I was talking to you earlier about how much I love Harrow in book 
one and I was so excited to see what she would do in book two. It feels like the hero of book one does not exist in book two. It's like she got a personality transplant. She's suffering from some pretty intense amnesia, which is very confusing. She's misremembering. She's literally recapping book one but misremembering all of the details. So that's one plot line and then there is a secondary plot line which is the present and it's told in second person. So you are Harrow. And it she doesn't feel like the same character. She's so stupid <laughs> in this book. She's she's getting outmaneuvered constantly. She has no idea what's going on and she's she's just really dumb and in book 1 she was so smart. And she was, she, again, 10 steps ahead of everyone and she was always plotting. And the Harrow of book two is not the same Harrow. She feels completely different. And I'm sure there's going to be an explanation at the end, but I'm starting to lose my patience. There was one scene, the soup scene, if you know, you know. There's one scene where Harrow gets the best of another character, gets the better of another character, which I thought was fantastic. And I was like, yes, this is the hero that I know and love. And then she went back to being stupid again. <laughs> so I'm a little frustrated with, with book two. It feels like even more of a slog to get through than book one. At least with book one, I was enjoying Gideon and Harrow as characters enough to keep me reading. To want to know what was happening to them but in book two I'm so annoyed with Harrow and her personality transplant that I'm just and there's more to slog through this book is longer than book one so you know you have to read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages before you get to that payoff so I'm 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 really frustrated and I really hope that the twist at the end, which I'm assuming is coming, will make up for the rest of the book. But it's hard to love a book and a series that continuously does this to the readers. You have to have a lot of patience. And I'm pretty patient, but after hundreds and hundreds of pages, I need, I need something. Give me a bone, <laughs> you know? Like, I only have so much patience. Hello, it is a few days later and I decided to let you guys know my final final thoughts on Harrow the Ninth and I'll be honest it took me several days to finish this book um, and I honestly had to look up spoilers for the ending to figure out if it was going to be worth it for me to continue. I was considering DNFing this book or giving up on this book but I read the spoilers and I was like, okay, those are kind of fun reveals. I'm gonna push through to the end. But I needed that like motivation to be like, is this even worth it <laughs> for me to slog through in order to give me the motivation to actually finish the book, which I think speaks volumes um, for my overall thoughts and opinions. A lot of what I said stands. I'm really frustrated with the direction of Harrow um, I did enjoy the reveals. I enjoyed it, all the plot stuff the last 30% of the book, but the first 70% was a big frustrating no-no for me. I just didn't connect with these characters as much as I wanted to. I didn't understand their motivations for literally anything. <laughs> like, the character motivations really confused me throughout. Just very confusing, even after all the reveals. Um, with that being said, I still kind of want to keep reading, like, book three. This is going to be at least four books, and the third book is coming out later in 2022, and I'm kind of intrigued by the direction that this series is going, and I'm kind of invested. So, like, while I didn't love Harrow the ninth, the book... I think enough happened in it to propel me forward in the series, if that makes sense. So I ended up giving Harrow two stars, 2.5 stars. It's really not 
not what I was hoping for. That, those are all of my, my thoughts. <laughs> See, this is why I needed to get on here and talk about this book and this series, just because I have so many conflicting thoughts. I wish I could come on here and just gush, but I feel like I had a lot to say about this one and I'm really curious to see if other readers of the Locked Tomb series feel similarly to me or different or if you're interested in this series like what you're anticipating because I kind of knew what I was getting into but at the same time I it, it went it went in a different direction and I don't know how I feel about it so let me know literally all your thoughts in the comments down below if you choose to to talk spoilers just add a little spoiler warning in the beginning of your comment i would love to talk to someone about this please <laughs> help me sort through my feelings and my thoughts about this series and i will see you in another video very soon thank you so much for watching bye